Grant and uh, we're here to talk a little bit more about the hobby. Now we call garage kits a hobby but that doesn't really do it justice because even though to us it might be a hobby, the people who buy them and the people that go to the shops and we peruse and we go to UK GK and we, we mess about, we say to people, oh have you got one of these, have you got one of those, well that's great but the people who supply that, the people who support the hobby, it's not necessarily a hobby to them, it's their way of life, it's their living and uh, I'm pleased to say I'm here to talk to Rachel Hunt Hi. and uh, she is what I would call a professional painter. You often hear the words pro painted banded about quite a lot, particularly if you buy stuff off eBay, it will say pro painted. Well, believe me, it's not pro painted. Pro painted is when you see a piece of work at, uh, in, a, in a shop or on a shelf and you look at it and it looks like in the nicest possible way it's been painted by a robot because it's perfect. There's not one little bit of paint out of place and you look at the next one to it and you think, well, that's painted as well. That must be painted by some kind of machine. But in uh, many instances, it's not a machine. Uh, in this instance, it's Rachel. So nice to meet you. Nice and to meet uh, you. I've known you for quite a long time now. I've always been passing the back room and said, hi, Rachel. Mm -hmm. and you said, hi. And you've been sitting in there <laughs> yeah. with a very fine brush, uh, probably painting Only Fools and Horses figures, probably. Yeah, <laughs> Which you probably. seem to do quite a lot of, mm, don't you? I do. But uh, I've got some figures here you've painted. And... Uh, this is this is Quint, and would you like to tell us who did this bust? Andy Copeland. It's Andy Copeland, yeah, which we've just interviewed, and mm -hmm. this is the bust I've been talking about in that interview. But you can see this is one that's been painted by Rachel. Uh, I personally have no idea how she gets it like that because it's perfect. If I look at, if I'm just looking here at his sideburns here, and I can see that the transition between the flesh tones and the sideburns is almost like an almost invisible sort of shadow here which has been superbly blended. And I look at that and it leaves me with absolutely no hope for my own painting. <laughs> so on one hand, you have all my about admiration, but also you break my heart every time I see you do something like this, because oh. I know I'm never going to be that good. <laughs> so, no, seriously though, but how, how, you know, you are one of these people that I often see in the background, but in fact, the, the impact of your work is very much in the foreground. So how did you get into the hobby? Um, Years ago, I used to work with Dave at the hospital. He's been obviously doing kits for years. Um, I came from an art background, and we, we so got you went together. To art school. Yes. Well, the few people in this hobby that actually went to art school. Yeah. So, did you go to art school in Norwich? Or? Chester. You went to Chester. Mm -hmm. you went to foundation course in Chester. Yes. I went to the foundation course Did in Chester you? too, yeah. yes. that's a bit longer ago than you, but yeah that's great. So mm. what were your ambitions then as an artist, because I know what mine were, uh, so what were your ambitions as an artist? I wasn't quite sure, I, mm. I was, I, because like a foundation course you obviously do lots of different areas, mm. uh, at the time I suppose I used to like um, the fabric design side of them, and I did go into that as like a profession. Was that a surface while. pattern or the, the actual? Uh, I, I went into it first of all as a designer's assistant. Mm -hmm. So I did, used to do all sorts of things. Used to um, cut out garments, model the garments, uh, and then I got into the pattern making. Okay. So that's, that's precision. Very, so that's isn't very it? precise. It's precision. Yeah. You can see that yeah. you need a particular frame of mind mm -hmm. to do that. And yeah. I think that is reflected in your yes. painting. Yeah. It's that yeah. I am a perfectionist. So <laughs> what did they say? Said, did they say, oh, by the way, I make model kits. Do you want to paint one for me? Yes. You did? Much. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of an icebreaker that, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit see of an icebreaker. There so you go. <laughs> and if, if you said you're good, I'll keep you. Yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. And that yeah. was, that was, uh, that was the it. beginning of it then, really. That was it. So what was the first thing you painted? Oh, blimey. In probably, terms of model a, kits, maybe? Probably a joker. A joker. Uh, yeah, a comic book Had you joker. painted a model kit until then? Or was that no, your first that model kit? No, that was the kit? first one. Only, only 2D before that. So you weren't like an Airfix home no. collector when you were a kid no. making Spitfires? No. 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 Yeah, you see, this is a pattern I see usually with female members of the profession mm. that they actually just go, oh, I'll have a go at that. Yeah. And, and it happens. And mm. it was a joker. Yeah. What type, was it a specific joker? Was it... Uh, um, Jack Nicholson Joker, or was it? No, was it like just like the comic book. So it was the elongated kind yeah. of, sort of DC kind yeah. of Joker from yeah. Ar Arkham Asylum, or something, yeah, like, something that. like that. Okay, well that's that's pretty. Now like, let's just have a look at this. Now this this is one of my favourite characters from a horror movie, uh, Leatherface. Uh, it is Leatherface, isn't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> Leatherface, and uh, it, it's uh, it's beautifully gory. 
I if that's a, if it, that might be a contradiction in terms, but when you see gore done in a really effective way, you've, it's quite a satisfying thing to look at because it actually does look enough like real blood to be kind of icky, but enough there's enough artifice in it for it to be part of a proper sculptor sculpture here. So, uh, what would you like to s tell us about this? Well, person? talking about gore, actually, mm -hmm. we do a lot of horror cons. Yeah. Um, and you can, for the people who buy these sort of things at those horror cons, you can never have enough blood on. You can never have blood. I always take okay. lots of pots of blood paint with me. <laughs> so, there is a gloss blood paint? Oh, yes. Like a Kensington yeah. gore of the painting world. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like our own range, actually. Mm. Oh. There's a range of paints yes. of different types of blood, apparently. Yeah. Does it, is it divided up in types of A, B? O negative or is it just <laughs> <laughs> it is very realistic looking, i could isn't imagine it? in some yeah. places they do have yeah. that <laughs> but yeah so explain to me how you applied that so. um right at the end once you've done all of the dulling mm -hmm. down and everything you can rub it in with your fingers you can splatter it you can run it down do all sorts of things with can you it. blow it out of the straw i suppose you could i've never tried I don't know, it i but... just thought you looked I just thought it flowed out. Why flowed not? Out straw. Give it a try. <laughs> so, is there any particular kit that you've enjoyed painting the most? Because I like personally, I like painting um, creatures, animals, dragons, dinosaurs. Monsters. Um, yeah, that sort of thing. It's something you can use your imagination on a bit. I don't, I'm not, I'm not really, not very keen on painting something like a man in a suit. No, okay. I mean, I do do lots of you men, do men in, in a suit, suit to me. But... <laughs> Only fools and horses. Well, yeah. Man in a suit. Yeah. But I, I see what you mean. So you want something which is and like something um, with a bit of bright colours and okay. yeah. something I can. I, I like airbrushing as well, actually. So, so you like airbrushing? Mm. How, do you, how how do you take to airbrush? Because I always found it as a very process heavy. I, I feel I feel I'm cleaning up more than I'm actually working with an airbrush. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, it is a bit messy. You've got to keep on top of the cleaning of your okay. airbrush. If it clogs, that's it. <laughs> Have you got a particular type of airbrush that you'd recommend? Well, <laughs> I've got lots and lots of airbrushes. None of which you'd recommend. Some really expensive <laughs> ones. Right. Okay. That Dave's bought these presents and things, and he goes mad because I don't use them. <laughs> They're all in a corner, and I've just got. Um, the one I use mostly is the eye water, the one with the big cup. Right, so. Because <laughs> right. it never clogs. It's, it's uh, every time I need it, it's there. So, do you it's use acrylics cute. or inks, or, or, or do you just use any tint to achieve um, the effect? I use inks and our own mm. range of paints as well. We can thin down and put those through. Okay. So, acrylics, yeah. really. Acrylics and inks. I suppose we use, when I first started airbrushing, it was Humbrel enamels. Oh, no. And it was a, it was a badger. <laughs> Airbrush. Mm. In fact, it wasn't. It was a Humbrol airbrush made under license right. from Badger, and it used to. I used to be able to spray about fifteen seconds before it clogged. Yeah. And then I had to blow a load of sort of turpentine through it. Oh. So basically, because I'm so old-fashioned, you're telling me things have changed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Would, wouldn't use Humbrol or anything. No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> no. So when you when you're airbrushing, say uh, something like because I know you repaired creature from the black lagoon for me a couple mm, of years ago which yeah. is the unluckiest kit i've ever had because i knocked it off again oh yeah it, it was uh <laughs> it was a very expensive american kit jaegers it was one of jaegers yeah. wasn't it and i knocked it off you repaired it for me yeah. and it had been airbrushed and it was perfectly done so this is the stuff that you're using through the airbrush yeah there we go the, what's it called the devil's devil's palette the devil's palette mm -hmm. would you like to explain to us how that came about was that something you came up with yourself yeah, we were certain colours. Well, we started off with just a few colours. Mm -hmm. um, colours that were used all the time. So we wanted them in bulk, really, because it's quite expensive yeah. to go. It's like your, your hobby shops and things, and you keep buying the little tiny sizes. Mm -hmm. um, and we started doing the workshops as well. So we used them in the workshops. So. Has it got a particularly good coverage? Has it got yes, good it coverage? Has. Yeah. So the pigment's quite good quality pigment. Yes. And you get plenty of coverage with a small amount of paint. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of special, well, this is one of the specialist mm -hmm. paints actually. This is a fantasy colour. Oh no, it's this flesh colour. Um, you, you don't just do two dimensional, uh, three dimensional stuff. You do two dimensional stuff. I've seen you paint on all sorts of things clothing, uh, shoes, yes. baseball boots. And Although stuff we like don't that. have as much time to do those sort of things oh, okay. at the moment. But yes, but I, I do do them. And you also do horror makeup. Is that yes. You do that as yeah. well. Yeah. So you basically jack of all you're trades. Jack of all trades, but it's the different <laughs> colour, isn't it? <laughs> Would you? I mean, my clumsy way of saying is, is this: the best painters I see in the hobby are female. 
I would I would say the best painters I see a female. When I see a female painter, they are on average better than the guy sitting next to them. I know that's a terribly sexist thing to say, and I apologise to all the men I've offended out there. <laughs> and if you are offended, you shouldn't really be watching this, should you? Because <laughs> you know you're going to get even more offended by the other things I'm going to say. So unless you're watching it well, too that, that's offended. where I, I I always say I'm I'm not a professional painter. I'm, I could never don't see myself as a professional painter. Uh, yeah. Although I do it as a living. That makes you a professional painter. Doesn't yeah. It? But you're all, you're constantly learning new techniques. Well, you are and constantly things learning and... new techniques. Agreed in any subject. Yeah. But I think you you have to have a natural affinity for it, and I think there's a subtlety in there that your average person wouldn't be able to achieve. I think that's mm. my personal opinion. So when you first started painting, and you did the Joker, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what what w w were you thinking? What the hell am I doing? Or were you thinking? Oh, I quite like this. At first, I thought, what the hell am I okay. doing? <laughs> <laughs> and it wouldn't have been as good as what I am now, obviously, because you, you know, experience and things. But I did enjoy it, yeah. Because you, I mean, you must have an eye for colour, because when I see three or four greens next yeah, to each I other, love, I love they colours. just look like as a green. It's like when mm -hmm. my, my good wife, my long-suffering wife, comes and says, we need to paint the living room, and she shows me a chart. Mm. I go, oh yeah, blue, green, brown, pink. And she says, no, no, look at this, what do you think of that one? And I look at the square of colour, and I look at the square of colour next to it. And to be honest with you, can't tell the difference. I can tell the difference in the ones either end. Mm. But the four in the middle just do nothing for yeah. me. So would you say you've got like a really good sense of colour? I like mixing my own colours, actually. Okay. Mm. Obviously, some, some colours you can use straight from the pots, but mm. I do like to mix my own colours. Would you I say like... that's particularly the case with flesh tones and things? Um, all colours. Because well, when I look at the way you do flesh tones, I, I can see like some, maybe a, a, it might just be mine, but I can see some blues in there mm -hmm. and some greens in there too mm. that give that sort of light, a lifelike nature to the flesh that yeah. you would have done. What do you think about wh when you finished something like this? Let me just show you the quince again. This is this is done with the acrylics we've just been discussing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And you can see the detail on it. If I hold it closer to the camera, I think it bears. I mean, it, it, it's Andy's sculpture, isn't it? Oh, good, isn't yeah, it? I mean, very good. you can paint the hell out of it, and if yeah. it wasn't good underpinning, it wouldn't be as good. Would mm -hmm. it? I mean, but you look at that, you look at the, the whole sort of shape of that sculpture, and I like the three sort of floats, the three things that they should be put in the shark's mouth at the end, don't they? And blow mm. the shark up with. Yeah, you, when you look at this and you look at the color of the paint, now it's layers, I see it's, it's layers, layers, is it? Yeah. It's layers. Yeah. So, okay, so you're, you're talking layers. What do you mean by layers? Um, obviously you've got to, you do your cleaning, your filling, your washing, all that sort of thing at the start. Then you've got your primer, then you've got your, then I put like base colours on. Mm. So I've got, I've got like a, a grey shirt, yeah. I'll, I'll use the, the primer closest to that, which is a grey. And then I'll put the blue paint on at the top. So that's, that's, that's another layer. You've got it all in base colours. Then you think, right, what am I going to do next? Then you're into things like uh, washes. Yeah, this is what I was talking to Kate about, or any air washes, because when I try and do a wash, yeah. it just dulls everything. It now, can be a bit hit what, and miss. What, now, what I do is I, I thin the paint really thin, and this yeah. is a really simple thing. I can see people on the, I can hear people on the YouTube going, that's not how you do a wash, that's not how you do a wash. But I get a big brush, I get some really thin paint, mm. and I whack it all over my model, and let it settle into the creases, yeah. and then let it dry. Is that wrong, or is that basically right, and I'm just clumsy? You find your own sort of way of doing things, I think. Okay. Um, obviously, you can get like tissue and things and, and dab off the the excess. I was suspected there was something yeah. like that going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. So on the raised bits where you don't want the wash, basically you physically just gently rub it off. Yeah, just dab it off. So it just remains in there. Yes. It's not like an instant fix or wash, is it? No. Not by any no. means. So there's some subtlety and skill to that. I mean, if you put it on and you don't like it, get a load of water and just wash, wash it, it off. Physically wash it before yeah. it dries. Yeah. Okay. I've seen some Warhammer paints, actually, that, that actually do sort of separate and, co and coagulate into the grooves and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do And they, work, they work very well on a small model. Mm -hmm. But I think the chemical composition is such that if you put it on a broader area, it wouldn't have the same effect. No. So there's basically no substitute for skill. I think each individual kit, you have to look as an item on its own because they've all got de different techniques that you would use you wouldn't use the techniques that you use on the quint with i don't know something they're like mars attacks or anything like no, that okay. so you just okay. take each thing as an individual do you ever get bored no 
No, I, I every day is completely different. I'm painting different things every day. Um, the only time I do get bored is occasionally when I do have to do multiples of the same multiples item. The same. I, I don't really enjoy right. doing that, but it's part of it, isn't it? One of my favourites that you've done recently is uh, Cell and Block. Right. You know, the vampire from Cell and Block. Mm -hmm. What's it called, Mr... Barlow. Mr Barlow. Because uh, um, in, in, the, in the TV series, uh, when you talk about Cell and Block, Mr Barlow, I think, was James Mason, but that Mr Barlow was in, is actually the vampire, isn't he? He's the mm. one you don't see. He's right? not in it very long but at all. But he's not been in it very long at no. all. And I, and I must admit that the way you've done that with the face and the, the blueness of the skin and stuff is a popular character. Is a, imagine he is, because mm. yeah, he comes in all different shapes and sizes. But yeah. I think this one was the large brush that's around somewhere in the. Uh, the Darren the Harvey office. one. Is that Darren Harvey? Yeah. Yes, because didn't he do Christopher Lee a couple of years back? Yeah, he did. Didn't he did. He? Yeah. That's right. So, yeah, that was that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So, the question is. So basically, if somebody buys a kit from Creature Features, mm -hmm. you'll paint it? If they want you if to. They want, yeah. If they pay you to and they want you to. So yes. somebody like me really loves their kits but is a really, really terrible painter. Oh. Doesn't need to worry anymore. No. Because they can actually custom, you can custom paint the kit for them. Yeah, and because it's because yeah. it's custom, you, you can have it however you want it. You want okay. um, more blood on it. So I was going to say... <laughs> Or something you, a different don't, be, don't, don't be put off by the likeness of the gore. You can have as much gore as you want. <laughs> if you want gore, we can give you gore. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's good. So uh, commission piece, how long will that take? Depends on the size it of the It depends kit, on what, what it is and what I've got on at the okay. moment, but, you know, at the same time. So do you prioritise them or do you fit them in? Um, a bit of both. A bit of both. <laughs> yeah. Depending on your workload. Yeah. Right, any any basic tips that you can give somebody like me or anybody else watching as a as a pro painter, I know you said you don't see yourself as one, but I, mm -hmm. I, I am now christening you pro painter. I'm thinking, oh, you're okay. a pro painter, because you're professional, <laughs> you make your living from it, you do it all the time, people love it when you do it. So, any basic tips? Well, one thing I always say to the people in the workshops, mm -hmm. if, if you make a mess of it, all you need to do is just paint over it again. Yeah. So that's one thing. Right. Uh, and also, if, if you're painting it for yourself, you can take as much time on it as, as you want, yeah. whereas I've got to get it in and out of the door sort of thing. So if, you, if it's for yourself, you can do extra little bits, extra yeah. little details. Um, give each, give it um, as many techniques as a, tr a try as you can. You're not going to love all of them. No. You find out, mm -hmm. you know, what you're more suited to. Um, yeah, just take it from there, really. Okay, so when I when I come to Creature Features and there's the guys sitting mm -hmm. in the room, yeah. and we're all sitting there chewing the fat, talking about stuff, yeah. having a laugh. You're in the other room there in your <laughs> painting studio, yeah. right behind the glass screen, <laughs> working away, yeah. doing you're doing whatever you do brilliantly, and you know, and every time I go, I do put my head around, don't I? And say, yeah. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for putting up with us because that's <laughs> that's how I feel. When you're sitting there, do you listen to what they say in here and just let it I water hear, off? I can hear, hear everything. everything. <laughs> right. Okay. So basically, but you're not a judgmental person, are you? No, no. <laughs> well, there's uh, a few reasons why I sit in my office actually. Right. Okay. Because I like to spread everything out. Yeah. And I like to be able to work see all area the, how you want it. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, there's not very much room in the main room because mm -hmm. there's, there's so many people sort of sitting around there around the table um and i can sort of listen from afar like you say okay well there you go it's like and i'm very yeah. busy it, you are very busy and even though they look busy in here they are yes. always that busy are they that is that's absolute brilliant insight and as i say to the kids at school when they draw something that first line that you put on the piece of paper isn't necessarily going to be there at the end no and that's what rachel basically is saying take your time with your painting uh if it's for you it's it's an endless bit of fun so you don't have to get it done that's quick. the thing don't rush at it. the end of the day it's fun it's a it's hobby fun. as long yeah. as you're enjoying it yeah do what you want well thanks very much rachel it's really insightful and i've really enjoyed doing the interview so that's the love you Bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> okay well here i am back in the main room at creature features uh, surrounded by all these wonderful things that you see when you come in here uh, and uh, today was an unusual day because when I came in, there were actually two females sitting at the painting table. 
which takes us back to a little article that me and Dave were talking about the other day when we were looking at previous copies of trade magazines and stuff like that. We were saying how in the past, less so now, but in the past they were quite sexist and the content was quite adult. And we felt that this didn't really sell the hobby to our to, to, to females, basically, if I can still use that term without <laughs> getting myself cancelled. Uh, this is Kate. Kate. Hiya. Do you identify as a female? I do. This is good. This is a good start, really, isn't it? And the reason I have uh, badgered Kate into doing this little interview is because I, I want to see the hobby from a female side, not just a male side. And we all have different reasons for being in the hobby and different ways we found the hobby. So uh, how did you get into this? I, well, first got into it when I first met Dave and Rach, when they were at Blake Mayor five or six years ago, I think I started it. Mm -hmm. um, went in to buy some random mugs and Funko Pops and bags and things and got talking to Rachel. Uh, commissioned her to do a couple of paintings for us. She's done um, a big predator mm -hmm. and then she's done the South Park um, Fruits Are Fun uh, painting. Right, which, which is in the back of the canteen behind the shack. That's right, yes. Right, it's a little grumpy girl. If you haven't noticed, it's a little grumpy girl. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. It's a little grumpy girl. So it says fruits are fun. So right. Rachel commissioned that, and I just got talking to her about painting, and she said, well, we do the kits. You had a, 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 an interest in science fiction, maybe fantasy, for that? Um, yeah, to a degree. I'm not really as into the, sort of the Marvels and the, the superheroes, but definitely the horror. Yeah, so kind of Predator is a kind predator, of great film. Yeah. It kind of crosses oh, yeah. both genres, yeah. doesn't it, from the, the sci-fi and the horror. Yeah, completely. So what's your favourite horror film, if I had to put you on the spot? Oof. Which is your current favourite horror film? I think I've always, and I will always have a soft spot for The Exorcist. Yeah, that is a scary movie, isn't it? It's yeah. one of the few movies that scared me, yeah. ever. Normally I laugh at horror movies, like Friday the 13th, yeah. I chuckle. <laughs> but The Exorcist is too too real, isn't yeah. it? Is it innocent? Yeah. So it's The Exorcist a was a, is a classic, mm. yeah. So uh, what other stuff recently has come out that you've been interested in? Um, I just watch a lot of the macabre stuff on, on Netflix. I like my okay. series, um, even down to like the chilling adventures of Sabrina, okay. which I find quite entertaining. So anything with a witch in it? Right? Yeah, oh yeah. Excellent. Oh yeah, all over the witches. Right, that's brilliant. <laughs> so uh, that's how you got into the hobby. Yeah. And uh, the reason I, I kind of came over and asked was because you're painting you were painting and you were just not just using paint like I see painting, but you were using pastels and sorts of different effects. Mm -hmm. Could you would you like to show the camera what you're working on at um, the moment? Yeah, I'm working on a Gremlins piece, um, which is quite a big kit and there's lots of things to it. So it's a proper kit, it's not just it's a, a proper kit. So no, lots I'm of different gonna have to glue to it, it all yeah, together yeah. at the end. Um, the brushing I've mainly done today have been on my battered cardboard boxes. Right. Um, but it's just a nice nice way of getting some subtle detail rather than having the thickness of the paint. Right. You get real subtle colour and you can sort of build it up little bit by little bit. So if if this wasn't available to you, would you be painting two dimensionally on a canvas or a piece of watercolour paper? Would that be the kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, probably, do? although I'm less inclined to do that, I just don't find it as fun. Did you do art at school? Yes. You did. <laughs> yeah. Did you really enjoy art yes, at school? Did, yeah. Was it a bit of a sanctuary? Uh, well, yeah, it was actually. Yeah, yeah that and music. So uh, we're going back. You see, <laughs> I, I being a head of creative arts, I like to I like to champion the arts. You yes. see, that's oh, why no, I'm definitely. saying this is like sanctuary. And did you enjoy? Yeah, so really good. Yeah, so I got an A in both. So you got an A in both. <laughs> did you do GCSE or A level? GCSE. GCSE. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay, so you paint because it's. Do you think painting three dimensional stuff that already exists that three dimensional entirety? Do you think that's easier for you to paint than two D painting? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I find with the kits. Mm -hmm. I can copy the picture exactly and I can actually sort of look for exactly how I want it to look and when I found my picture I will stick rigidly to that right and so, I will you, copy it. so you've got you've actually got a ref a solid ref a fixed yeah. reference point yeah you don't just go in there like I do and think what well, I'm going to paint no. it today you actually seriously you're taking it seriously yeah. I, mean, I yeah. can tell no, by I your face I when do. you were concentrating <laughs> so you, I thought this lady is taking this very seriously no, I, and I do uh, and it's right. because when I walk past it I want to be able to Feel quite proud of it. Can I? Of course. Is yeah, it, go is for it. it. Yeah, is the gremlin dry. dry? Yeah, the gremlin is dry. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. This is a female gremlin. I'm assuming it's a female <laughs> gremlin. It's a female, gremlin. It's a female, female gremlin. gremlin. <laughs> but you can see the bikini there is actually got loads and loads and lots of little uh, spots on it, each individually painted by hand. And unlike myself, they are remarkably evenly distributed. Toothpick. <laughs> With a toothpick. Toothpick. So you use a toothpick to put that on. Look mm -hmm. at that. If you just, it, what you have to do to appreciate it, maybe the camera doesn't show you, is 
there's a lot of modeling and a lot of highlights and, and dry brushing and washes gone onto this little green monster and i have to say i'm very impressed by it it's one of those little things that when you go into a, something like uk gk and you 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 have to show when you go up and you look at the trade stands and you think yeah and then you go and look at the competition stand where people have have put stuff in for a competition and you look at it and you think <laughs> you feel demoralized because <laughs> you think i'm never going to be able to paint like that and you know what i'm never going to be able to paint like that Thank you. so no that is beautiful you know all my years of endeavor never came anywhere close <laughs> so that's great <laughs> so uh you, you i suppose you like, like me to an extent you've got a limited sort of exposure to the garage kit scene yeah because yeah. i kind of got into it through being a sculptor and uh you know i i i find it hard to engage with with people generally speaking i mm -hmm. think i'm a little bit i think i'm somewhere on the spectrum of not as we all? people wouldn't say i was yeah. but i am actually <laughs> so uh how, how do you find people's attitude to you first of all because whether I like it or not, it is unusual to see a woman mm -hmm. in the hobby. Have you ever felt uh, an, as an uh, felt like an outsider, or not have you all. always felt integrated? I've in always been welcomed, literally always from the day I walked in. You know, you see a sea of a sea of faces going, "Oh, who's this?" And yeah. then after that, it's, "Oh yeah, you're all right." And they're just so lovely. Everyone's so lovely, and I would I would say I have been ad adopted as the little sister of the group. Oh, that's that's great. No, definitely. We we were talking about things like anime and manga mm -hmm. and uh how and cosplay and how that's becoming much more popular amongst females yeah for want of a better word these days i suppose <laughs> uh, uh do, do you do you do you do you sometimes sit there and think shouldn't there be more girls in this hobby well <sighs> or do you think that's never really or do you or you've never really thought about that because you just see people yeah, I've, I've never really, I've never really thought about it. Okay. I mean, it's it's quite obvious that the numbers are smaller, but when the person I've taken the most inspiration from, Rachel, is yeah. female, it's yeah. kind of hard for yeah. me to to sort of say, well, actually, mm -hmm. if I was the only one and it was just Dave, then it might be a different matter. Okay, but cool. I don't think so. And I think every time somebody meets Dave and Rachel, and particularly when they were at Blakemere, so they had the footfall of people just wandering in, yeah. they're just so lo lovely, so welcoming. Then I think everyone would be. So I think the same. In t just this is this is me trying to get a few tips to improve my <laughs> technique. Okay, uh, what type of paint do you do? You use a specific brand of paint. Um. Well, uh, basically, whatever, whatever David makes stuff. Whatever comes. I I, I I don't okay. buy stuff anywhere else. Right. I don't. Okay. Okay. So it's acrylic. It's, it's acrylic paint or paste. or the airbrushing kit and the chalk. Right, the chalk. Right. Mm -hmm. So with the paint, uh, which w when you're doing one of the things I always find difficult is washes. Yeah. How do you go about that? Um, I've never really done any yet. Have you not done <laughs> no, any yet? No, right, not yet. Fine. Uh, <laughs> have you got any tips that you might share with me? <laughs> Only the toothpicks Only if the you toothpicks. want tiny little so dots. Tiny little dots is <laughs> yeah. toothpicks. And the, the um, red gloss on the lips, is that red gloss or is it? Um, it, was, it was gloss paint. It's gloss paint. Yeah, it was just okay. that colour. The thing I find is if you just take your time when you're blending. Ah, see along there. This is this is a subtle art of the transition well. between the two colours. Yeah. And uh, go on, tell me then. Yeah. Just well, it, it's just time. Time, just time, patient, time and patience. So, is it time with the dry brush blending? Is it time uh, with a specific I, amount of paint? I or? blend with a really, 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 especially on something like this, a really, really small brush. Really and small just brush. tiny little circles. Is that square tip or is it, is it pointed tip? Or? Pointed tip. Pointed tip. Yeah. Is, that, is that it there? No, that's the that's the chalk brush. Uh, the one I tend to use is something like that. Okay. Especially on a model like this, because she's quite Cause it, small. Cause she is quite small. Um, yeah. And even on when I did the blending on the Harry, the, it's only the Harry sign, which is about that sort of size. Right. So again, I okay. used a small one. Right. But time and patience. You see, in my head, being the, I don't know, sort of like, I don't know, I'm, I'm very clumsy when it comes to paint. <laughs> so I would have just got, a, I'm thinking, got to blend it flat tip brush like a like a wedge shaped brush and i'd be like rubbing away like that so you think there's a there's obviously there's subtlety you yeah. need to learn it depends on how much you want right. to blend it out i would just always if i was just blending that solid that line mm -hmm. which is basically what i've done i'll just use that and they're uh, putting a pastel on yeah because the when, the when they say get me the pastels i'm seeing somebody doing this like a cheese grater with a pastel <laughs> on a piece of plastic so how are you putting the pastel are you putting that on very with very the... very short stubby brush did you cut that so down so you can scrub it in yeah Okay, that's a good idea. And you scrub, oh, and you scrub, right. and you scrub, and you scrub. You see the top of that's been cut off, so it's flat. And these pastels, these artist pastels. Yeah. yeah. 
we keep talking about pastels, but we're not talking about round trees, fruit pastels. We're talking about uh, these artist pastels. They, they, when I was, when I first went to art school all those years ago, right, I thought this was chalk. It's not chalk. Chalk's a really cheap pigment uh, in, in, in talc or chalk. But this is like really intense pigment. So if you buy a pack of these, it'll last you for a good long time. Oh, yeah. They, you know? Yeah. So it, it's worth it. If you want some subtlety in your painting, it's worth having a look at one of these. Just get a box of these from the art shop. It's a nice art shop in, in, uh, in Northwich. I always try and promote it. It is. Yeah, it's a it lovely is. art shop. It is isn't a lovely it? And the guy in there is yeah. great. So go to Northwich, buy some pastels if it's open. <laughs> yeah. So, well, so thank you very much. So, thanks for indulging me on this. It's a pet thing of mine because I have a daughter who is who I, who I brought up as a boy, so she, she could enjoy all the things that boys enjoy. <laughs> right? Turns out I didn't need to because she was just a person, right? And she just got on with it herself. But uh, you know, so it's nice to talk about these things, and it's nice to see female people in the hobby. It's nice to be able to talk to them firsthand. So, thanks very much. You're very welcome.